we have picked up Fiona. Yay! Here is Doggo. Which means that we are near the end of our trip. We only have the last 21 miles to go to our house. Uh, there's no need for us to stop anywhere and charge. There's no need for us to stop and have a break or get food or drink or anything like that. So now is a good time for us to um, do our closing thoughts on this road trip. I thought the trip went extremely smoothly. It was, as I was telling Luke earlier, frictionless for me. He did so much planning ahead of time and was so clear on exactly what needed to happen and when. And he, of course, he did all the driving and all the navigating and most of everything else that needed to happen, which was not only just nice for me, you know, from a normal perspective, but also I wasn't feeling super well the whole time. I felt like I was kind of coming down with a cold, so I was a little extra tired and not quite so energetic which meant that um, I actually slept in the car quite a bit of the way, and um, I didn't worry at all. He, I kept asking him if he was okay, and he was like, great, no problem. You know, I could have driven if he'd really needed me to, but it seemed like he was fine. So I appreciated the rest, and I appreciated feeling secure and safe knowing that he had everything all taken care of. It is possible that two minutes before we got into the car to start this trip last week, I could have just opened up a better route planner, put the destination address in, and just followed that and been fine. That was uh, essentially good enough. I went into more detail, so I had like a time schedule and a budget and all of that stuff. But you know, not everybody has to do that. If you want to road trip a bolt or anything like that, you can put it into a better route planner and off you can go. I didn't use a better route planner for navigation at all while we were driving. I stuck with using Waze the whole time. As far as getting battery percentage accuracy out of my Chevrolet, it wouldn't update while the car was charging, so eh. It was best just using the, the guessometer for miles is what we ended up doing and that served us just fine. We had eight charging stops on the way to our destination, eight charging stops on the way home, and in between, three chargers that we stopped at. One of them we stopped at twice, one of them we stopped at three times, and one of them we stopped at twice. So really seven charges while we were there. Of those seven charges, one of them, for two of them, was an EVGO, and we were able to use our EVGO credits that Chevrolet gave us uh, for buying the car. We used those credits to pay for those two charges, which is good, because those would have been like 34 bucks between the two of them, but they didn't cost us anything since we had the credits. The other two chargers that we stopped at while we were in Eastern Tennessee were in the charge point network and they charge by the kilowatt hour and those charges all added up to about 20 bucks. Our total bill for Electrify America for the other 16 fast charges that we needed for the trip was $39.06. It didn't change from when we got to uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee because every single charger on the way home was free. Electrify America, we, told the people we met at the last charger, they gave them an idea why, and I don't remember what it was that they said, do you? Yeah, what they said is that the charging speeds were reduced. So that didn't affect us because our car can't charge at the highest rates anyway. But for those cars that have the ability to charge at, you know, 350 or whatever, they, I think the charger, the charging stations did not have the capacity to charge that fast while they were undergoing whatever this update was. So they decided to make it up to the customers by just not charging. Just, and we lucked out into uh, the days that that was the case. Two of the charges that we had on the way there were free. All eight on the way back were free. So we only paid for six charges through Electrify America for a grand total of 39 bucks. I worked it out, even counting the more expensive charging rates um, that we had with the charge point network uh, to be 2.7 cents per mile was our total cost for this trip and charging at home off of our solar is about two and a half worked out to a grand total of like $59 and change 
and on our Subaru at it's again at that 291 that that I saw that we saw in Arkansas which was down to 289 by the time we came back uh, but two dollars 91 cents a gallon would have been over 221 dollars in our Subaru Crosstrack for the number of miles that we drove on this trip that we paid $59 for the fuel. Right. And, you know, planning ahead, we we could tell just from gaming it out that uh, taking the electric vehicle was going to be cheaper. And, you know, we were pretty sure it was going to be half or less than half to take the Volt versus taking the Subaru, just paying full price. And the fact that we were able to get free charging was a complete surprise and just a bonus. Obviously, if you're planning a trip, you can't plan on getting free charges. You don't want to, you know, include that in your budget because you don't know whether how long that's going to last or where it's going to apply. But it's still cheaper. Based on how much we spent on the way there and how much those two free charges would have been, it wouldn't have been $39. It would have been a grand total of like 55 mm -hmm. which would have been 110 just figure the same amount on the way back. Is that fair? Yeah. So figure $110 for the trip, for the whole, for the trip on Electrify America on what would have been $220 in our Subaru. So still, even if we had had to pay for every charge, it still would have been half the cost. The car drove smooth. It was great when Waze gave directions at the last minute and I needed to get across multiple lanes in a hurry. I could just step on it and the car had the power to do that, to, to make that happen. Oh, and talk about how it enjoyed those mountain roads. Oh, and the mountain roads were great because all you have to do is adjust the way you're uh, finessing your accelerator uh, with one pedal drive turned on and you get good braking going into the twisties. This car was so fun on those tighter mountain roads. It was great. Um, the and car the, liked it. You could tell because it's so uh, bottom heavy, low to the ground. It just hugged those curves. And mm -hmm. that little uh, section of Interstate 40 we were on through the, the Smoky Mountains uh, was, was quite fun maneuvering through all of that with all of the traffic. Uh, charging wise, didn't have any issues with, uh, with charging. We had one charger that only was giving us 34 kilowatts instead of 54. Right. Now, if we had a car that could take more than 54 kilowatts, we probably would have said, oh, this, tri this trip was terrible. The chargers were so slow. Yeah. But 54 kilowatts is all we can take. And there was only one charger. Well, no, there were two chargers, only one with Electrify America uh, that didn't give us peak charging. And that was this morning in Hope when we left the hotel. Um, but our battery was cold and I didn't precondition it or anything, so that might have something to do with it. And then the other one was that EV Go that I stopped at twice, and the first time it only gave me 34 kilowatts also, but when I went back the second time it gave me the 54. Right. You know, and the other thing I was thinking about is if you are the type of driver that likes to just get in the car and just, you know, drive until you run out of gas, pee in a Dixie cup or whatever, and just go as fast as you possibly can, then take, you know, taking an EV is going to feel really slow to you because you do have to take a break to charge and you can't just go at maximum possible speed like you can in an uh, internal combustion engine vehicle. But for us, We've done road trips in our internal combustion engine vehicles, and we this is just the way we like to road trip. We like to take a lot of breaks. You know, we don't mind stopping and stretching our legs and going to get something to eat or drink. And so this is just comfortable for us. We would have taken two ways, two days to get to Tennessee, even if we hadn't taken a car that needed to stop and charge. You know, the the big difference was with uh, when I planned this trip out with the Subaru, with the uh, internal combustion gas gasoline powered Subaru. Uh, it was going to take the exact same amount of time. The difference was we wouldn't. We were going to take more breaks. We were going to have more frequent breaks instead of only taking our breaks at the charging stops and there were a couple of times that we stopped just because we needed to in between chargers but not many mm -hmm. there were a lot of times that we we went for a hundred 120 miles and I, I know that there are going to be some of you guys that, that that's nothing but for us that's a big deal that's a lot of miles for us mm -hmm. so for us it 
worked out to be the exact same amount of time, even if when we stopped, we stopped for a little longer than we would have for one break, but we didn't stop longer than we would have for two breaks. And again, for those of you out there who say, well, I've got this huge gas tank on my diesel truck, I want to refer you again to the diesel pump that we saw in Jackson, Tennessee on the second morning of the trip. Dude, my car payment's not that high on this car. I know. And it's like, I would like to, you know, spend, I don't like the idea of paying a car payment for a trip. Yeah, the, a, a diesel can have all kinds of torque and all kinds of power and all kinds of distance because it can carry a huge fuel tank. But the way that that costs right now, I'd ra oh man, that that's just that just hurts how much that tr the trip would have cost yeah. to be going that way. Yeah, yeah. And we assume if you're watching this video, you're at least a little bit open to the idea of electric vehicles. Or you you tuned in for one of my motorcycle videos and going, what the hell is this? But if yeah. you're this far into the video, you're probably okay with it. Right. And it, you know, it's not for everybody. I have friends who live in Canada who say that it's just too cold up there and the chargers are too far apart and they're looking more into hybrid vehicles. So, you know, we're not here to judge you if you prefer a different type of vehicle, oh, but no. it does irritate us when people have misinformation and they are arguing in favor of ICE vehicles because they just don't know what the hell they're talking about. The car is, is now about 10 miles away from being able to plug into our solar yeah. uh, powered house. 